Well, the terror feeling quite real after attacks across three continents, including that horrifying scene we just talked about in Tunisia. And now a new analysis by the Clarion Project finding more than 42 million Arabs have, a, have someone that's positive on ISIS, and they in fact support the terror group. The terror group winning over more than 8 million supporters in 11 different Arab nations. Ryan Morrow is a security analyst with the Clarion Project. That is very scary. How is it that ISIS is reaching such a wide vath? I mean, just so many people, the swath of people, millions of people following ISIS. How do they do it? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to success, is that once it, they appeared successful, they were able to put out this narrative that you may disagree with us, but obviously agrees with us because, yeah. look, we're being successful, and that's how you judge who is right and who is wrong in radical Islamic theology. And what we found when we were looking at four different polls that all came up with very similar results is that there's about 22 million people across the Arab world who are strong supporters of ISIS. If you expand it to include those that say that they kind of like ISIS, they're somewhat positive, that's when it swells to about 42 million. I remember a day when we talked so much about al-Qaeda. We don't ever seem to talk about al-Qaeda, but ISIS does something differently than al-Qaeda did in recruiting supporters. What is it that ISIS does almost better, I hate to say, than al-Qaeda did? Well, they're much better at messaging. They've been able to bridge the gap between Western culture and radical Islamic ideology. So it's common to see ISIS folks online referencing Western culture and Western movies, whereas al-Qaeda is more puritanical in, in their messaging. But what we did find also is that al-Qaeda still has more support than ISIS even mm -hmm. has. Um, but ISIS is the bigger threat right now because of how they've been able to mobilize. And keep in mind, those numbers, as frightening as they are, uh, the vast majority of Arabs, according to these polls, do reject ISIS. But even with this small minority, ISIS has so many people that they can recruit from. I want to talk about the feds issuing a terror bulletin ahead of the 4th of July weekend. We also want to be very clear here, there has been no specific threat. Uh, but nonetheless, the marking of one year since ISIS declared a caliphate on June 29th is coming up. Uh, add Ramadan, which began last week, to the mix. You have several dates of concern here. How are intelligence taking a look and, 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 and trying to get inside the minds of these terrorists before these dates come up. Well, you have to look at what's most ideologically significant to them. Um, and so, for example, ISIS is out there saying that during the month of Ramadan, your obligation to engage in jihad is ten times greater than at any other time throughout the year. And if you die in jihad during this time period, your reward from Allah is ten times greater. So those that might have been on the will now be second-guessing that and saying, if I'm going to strike, I need to do it now. And then you mix in the anniversary of the caliphate being declared um, and various other events that went on in ISIS's history this week. You get a pretty frightening picture. Homeland Security Chairman Mike McCall, uh, he said on Fox News Sunday as well, and I want to quote him, he says, ISIS is not just regionalized like the administration says, only in Iraq and Syria. This says to all of us that obviously we have not done enough to prevent ISIS from spreading. It's not just in Iraq and Syria. That's where our airstrikes began, first Iraq, then Syria. It is much more widespread, and we did not get there and get to it before we allowed it to spread, did we not? Right. We let this thing get so big that we're now dealing with the current situation. But what the poll numbers show is that if we don't act quickly, this is still going to grow. And what we're looking at today is going to look like the good old days compared to what the future looks like. Ryan Morrow, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you.